This is the most sugar on the planet, straight from the juice of sugar cane crafted for thousands of years. But how do we turn those towering stalks into that rich brown sugar you sprinkle on your oatmeal? In this video, we're diving into the entire mind-blowing process behind this sweet staple. Sugarcane processing kicked off in India around 300 BC, when Alexander the Great's soldiers raved about a reed that gave honey without bee. Back then, sugar was a rare luxury, fit only for kings and nobles. But everything flipped when Christopher Columbus brought sugarcane to the Caribbean. It thrived in those tropical islands with their warm, humid vibes, perfect growing conditions. Fast forward, and the United States became a powerhouse producer, turning sugar from an elite treat into an everyday essential on American tables. The journey to this delicious stuff starts right in the sugarcane fields. Most United States sugarcane comes from massive plantations in Florida, where the steamy, sunny climate is spot on for growth. These fields sprawl across about 381,000 acres. That's roughly 26 times the size of Manhattan. Picture this. Sugarcane towering in the hot Florida sun, soaking up that fertile soil to pump out the sweetest juice imaginable. Inside those sturdy stalks hides the magic, loads of sucrose, nature's own sugar. When it's ripe and ready, farmers set the fields ablaze in a controlled burn that crackles and roars, stripping away dry leaves and junk for an easier harvest. Imagine the spectacle. Flames racing across the fields, scorching away the unwanted bits and leaving behind juicy, sugar-packed stalks. Crews spray fuel around the edges and only ignite when the wind's just right, ensuring a quick, safe burn. Once the smoke clears, it's time for the heavy hitters, the harvest machines, to roll in. These beastly machines, weighing in at about 20 short tons each, glide through the fields with pinpoint precision. Spinning blades slice through stalks up to 10 feet tall, while the leftover leaves and trash get chopped and scattered back as fertilizer, enriching the soil for next year's crop. Get this, one machine can haul in up to 1,100 short tons of sugarcane a day, doing the work that once took over 100 folks. But here's the nail biter. Harvest season slams right into hurricane time. A single storm with howling winds or pounding rain could wipe out the whole thing, snapping stalks or flooding fields in a heartbeat. You know what that means? Operators are in a constant race against the clock, squeezing every good weather hour to save the crop. These machines run around the clock with maintenance teams on standby for instant fixes. In those crunch days, every second counts. If a hurricane hits early, thousands of tons of sugarcane could be lost forever. The cut stalks get loaded onto massive trailers that sync up with the harvesters, keeping the flow non-stop. Once full, these containers hitch a ride on trucks straight to the sugar mill. Each year in Florida's sugarcane fields, over 17 million short tons get harvested, enough to churn out hundreds of thousands of tons of brown sugar. The logistics here are epic. A fleet of 120 trucks hustles non-stop to get that fresh cane to the mill, because once cut, it starts losing its sweetness in just hours. Day in, day out, they haul about 27,500 short tons to keep the processing lines humming. The action ramps up as fresh cane arrives at the mill and gets dumped onto huge conveyors heading to the cleaning zone. There, Powerful water jets and spinning rollers blast away dirt, leaves, and harvest debris with a thunderous roar. Feel the power of tech in action. The cleaner the cane, the purer the juice, and the better your brown sugar tastes. Next, the spotless stalks hit a gigantic conveyor belt, zooming them to the mill's crushing area. That's where the real transformation kicks in. The challenge? That precious sucrose is locked deep in tough fiber stalks, guarded by layers of cellulose. To free it, the cane passes through razor-sharp rotating knives that chop it into small pieces, about six inches long, making them easier to handle and prime for crushing. These chunks, known as cane bagasse, then head to heavy-duty hammer mills that pulverize them further, breaking down the fibers and letting that sweet juice start to ooze out. Listen up!
That's the thunderous crack of thousands of sugarcane stalks getting crushed, unleashing that first rush of sweet, sticky juice. In an instant, the air fills with this bold, fresh, and oh-so-subtly sweet aroma from the young cane. This is ground zero for the magic transformation. Each crusher features massive metal cylinders spinning in opposite directions, squeezing the fibers with tremendous force amid a symphony of grinding noises. As it's pressed, the cane releases its prized sugary juice, which flows through specially designed channels, while the dry, fibrous leftovers, bagasse, are separated out. Instead of waste, this bagasse fuels the mill's boilers, generating steam and electricity to power the whole operation. Every crusher is monitored 24-7 by operators tweaking pressure, juice flow, and extraction efficiency in the steamy heat. The raw output gets stored in huge stainless steel tanks, a thick grayish mix of sugary juice, plant bits, tiny rocks, and field dirt. Before refining, this mix needs a thorough cleanup to ditch impurities that could mess with the flavor or color. So it's pumped to clarification tanks, heated to around 230 degrees Fahrenheit and dosed with clarifiers. These agents make the gunk clump and float to the top in a foamy scum that skimmed off mechanically, leaving clearer juice at the bottom. Fun fact for United States consumers. In American mills, further refining for white sugar often uses bone char, charred animal bones, to filter and whiten, which is why most cane-based white sugar isn't vegan. Some places use sulfur-based methods or alternatives, but bone char is common here, unlike beet sugar, which skips it entirely. Before crystallizing, the juice gets lab-trusted rigorously. Technicians check purity and sugar levels amid the hum of equipment. More clarifiers snag fine particles for easy filtering, resulting in crystal-clear juice ready for the next steps. The clarified juice flows to enormous stainless steel evaporators for the most delicate phase, concentration. Here, it's gently boiled, evaporating water until it thickens into a golden syrup. As it bubbles, the color deepens, textures shift, and that irresistible caramel aroma wafts through the mill. This is where sugars start forming crystals, demanding spot-on precision. Right now, if you were standing here, you'd totally get why they dubbed this stuff brown gold. The factory air is thick with that irresistible scent, rich, cozy caramel wafting up as the syrup steams and thickens. This is the heart and soul of brown sugar, folks. Operators watch temperature, pressure, and saturation like hawks. That golden hue and caramel kick come from molasses, the thick, dark byproduct left after crystallization. The more molasses sticks around, the darker and moister your brown sugar gets. Once perfectly concentrated, the syrup heads to centrifuges to spin out crystals from molasses. It's loaded into these high-speed spinners, like giant washing machines on steroids. The force flings lighter liquid molasses through tiny holes in the drum, while denser brown sugar crystals stay put inside. Well, just like that, sugar separates from molasses without losing the bits that give brown sugar its signature color and taste. Unlike white sugar, which gets stripped clean, often with that bone char we mentioned, brown sugar hangs onto some molasses for that moist texture and deep caramel flavor Americans love in baking. So, the million dollar question everyone asks, is brown sugar actually healthier than white? Fact is, thanks to the molasses it holds onto, brown sugar packs a tiny boost of minerals like calcium, potassium, and iron. But calorie-wise and overall body impact, they're pretty much twins. The real win is that deep, caramel-rich flavor from the molasses. Just keep in mind, according to the FDA, the daily value for added sugars is 50 grams per day on a 2,000-calorie diet. Both types count toward that limit. One key thing to note, the brown sugar we're seeing here is the industrial kind, essentially white sugar with molasses mixed back in for that color and taste. It's a far cry from old school varieties like Muscovado or Asian Jaggery, which skip the centrifuge step altogether. They just boil down the cane juice, locking in all the natural molasses from the get-go for an even bolder, more layered flavor profile. The collected molasses isn't tossed, it's repurposed for candies, booze, syrups, and even animal feed. 
After separation, the brown sugar crystals chill in big silos, staying moist and fluffy. From there, it's conveyed through chutes to the drying section. In industrial dryers, hot air blasts reduce moisture to just 2%. Then, the brown sugar hits the packaging line, where automated systems fill bags of all sizes. During packing, spot checks ensure every batch nails that caramel essence and perfect crumbly feel. Sealed and labeled, these bags ship out to supermarkets nationwide, delivering pure sugarcane sweetness straight to your kitchen. If you dug this behind the scenes scoop, give it a thumbs up and share with your crew. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications for more How It's Made gems. Catch you next time.